If you're a <laughs> catheter company and you want to sell the most catheters, you should probably hire catheter users. Yeah, right? for sure. Like, so I guess that's kind of what I'm, I'm kind of getting at. And, and here I'll get even, even deeper. I really think YouTube and social media marketing is a way for disabled people to escape poverty um, and to not. And to be able to find a new career path and a new job in a new industry and in a new world and a new market, because a lot of people get hurt. And when they get hurt, they usually can't do the job that they were doing before. Um, they may have been the sole breadwinner in their household. And currently, a lot of people are starting to document their rehabilitation and recovery journeys using social media, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Instagram, um, wh whatever it may be. And there's a large following because people, able-bodied people and disabled people alike want to be inspired. They want to see the journey and see the vision. And we know from personal experience that being an influencer is a very big job. And most people don't get paid to do it because honestly, they're doing it for fun. They can build up their own, maybe merchandising. Maybe they can get some free stuff. Maybe a, a wheelchair company or like a catheter company will like give them, send them a box or give them a free wheelchair. But in my opinion, that's that's not okay. Like I don't because at that point, that the company is is using that free wheelchair as as marketing as a way to be like, ooh, look at this person is using our product now. And and in the world of disability and in the world of, of wheelchairs and stuff, we see what our peers are using and go, oh, I want to buy that. You know, so it's it's a lot of on recommendation. And I, I think... I think that's just how the world works right now. No, I agree. And and this is where I'm, I'm talking about, like, it's an inside job. If, if people, if companies that serve disabled people want to do the most philanthropic and honestly financially responsible and also helping out their customers escape poverty is by by paying them fairly for what they do for them so if a person is an athlete and and a company comes along and says i'm going to give you this wheelchair for free and say it's a five thousand dollar wheelchair that's cool that's great that athlete's going to use that wheelchair they're going to compete they're going to do a really good job but you got to start paying them too because that person is a representative of your brand it's not just an ambassadorship and it, don't call it a sponsorship because it's not a sponsorship it's literally a gift you are using that individual as a marketing device for your product. So therefore, that particular person who is an incredible athlete who's using your wheelchair, therefore, anybody else who wants to be an athlete in that sport picks out that wheelchair too. Yeah, it's not like Roger Federer is only using Wilson Rackets and that's the only payment he's getting. Is like, oh, I'm using Wilson Rackets. No, he's using Wilson Rackets, but he's being paid to use Wilson Rackets because he could go to any racket company and get people and get a free equipment at that level. I think the the problem is is some people come into this brand new and they don't have that ability where they're at the top of their game and they're able to just go around to any equipment manufacturer and go, yo. Give me this because I'm I'll use it all the time. They they'll they'll have the first company that it finally approaches them and they've been, oh my gosh, I've been trying to find a company that would finally give me a free wheelchair because I need a new one and I haven't been able to afford it, but like I'll take this as the payment. And I think that's probably fine. Like right off the bat. I'm like, not I'm not saying in that con like it's it's sure it's fine, but I think I but think if they but if they weren't poor, if they weren't in poverty, they could pay for their own wheelchair. Yes, I agree. But and, and if and if but they also might think like, oh, this is cool. I think a lot of like influencers, not just in the disability space, go that route. They like getting a lot of free shit. Like it's just fun. You know, like you you're constantly just getting sent free packages and all this stuff. And you're kind of you know you're endorsing them, but that's also kind of the price you're paying for getting it for free. Cause like, let's not get it twisted. The 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 thing that you are getting to use is also a benefit. Like, it's not like it's worth nothing to you. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I'm saying if someone is taking the route of be trying to become a social media influencer, to have a business, to make money, to not have to be on a social security disability check and to make the equivalent amount of money that they were making before they got disabled, it's time for the disability community businesses to start paying fairly. And that takes two sides. That takes one, the companies agreeing to pay fairly, and that also takes the influencers standing up for themselves and, and asking for the right amount of money and also knowing 
how to ask for that money. So I'm going to give you guys a huge tip right now. If you're a wheelchair user who's got a decent sized Instagram or a decent sized YouTube and companies are sending you a bunch of stuff for free for you to review on your page or on your website or to promote, they are using you for marketing which means that you need to charge them for marketing. How you charge them for marketing is you go to a website called socialbluebook.com. When you're on socialbluebook.com, you log in with your account, whether it's a YouTube account, whether it's an Instagram account, whether it's a Facebook account, and when you log onto the account, it pulls up all your data and all your analytics, and it shows you the value of each post. So if you put an Instagram story, that has a certain amount of cost. An Instagram story where they tag the brand, that that's a cost. A picture, that's a cost. A video, that's a cost. A, 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 a full video, and we're just talking Instagram. Okay, now let's jump over to YouTube. A video that you briefly mentioned something costs something. A video where you spend 60 seconds talking about something in built, a built-in commercial, that has a cost. A video that is fully dedicated to the product or service, that also has a cost. So initially, and I see so many, and you you companies that may be listening right now don't think I haven't noticed, and there's some key players that take a, a massive, massive advantage of disabled people because you know you can not pay them at all, or you can underpay them because you know that they are afraid to make money. Because as a disabled person, if you are already on disability check, if you make money that money gets deducted from your disability check. So let's say in a, in a month you get paid $1,000 from your disability check, but you make $500 on your own, they cut $500 from your disability check. So that means in a year, if you make 12 grand by working hard on your own, you lose 12 grand of government assistance and your insurance on top of that. So what needs to happen is the companies need to find a way and the influencers need to find a way for to speak up for themselves and and demand what they're owed and the companies need to pay for that for those marketing dollars to where you can double the amount of income that you make so someone who's making a thousand dollars a month needs to figure out how to make two thousand dollars a month in order to replace the twelve thousand dollars and then have enough money to buy their own insurance and then there, there's also room to scale at that point. There's room to grow as the following grows, as the video views grow, as the professionalism grows, as the products and services they deal with grow. You know, don't be an ambassador. Don't sign up for some link for some 30% code. No, you are a direct to consumer marketing machine. Your audience trusts you, your audience likes you, and your audience believes in you. So the second you say, oh, I've got these cool adaptive pants or this cool wheelchair that I'm using, all 500 to 5,000 to 50,000 to 100 to 500,000 people that follow you, you've just endorsed that for nothing. Do you really think LeBron James gonna be endorsing Nike for nothing? You think he's gonna be wearing Nikes for nothing? Hell no. This is what I'm saying. This is the only industry where the manufacturers of the products that serve the disabled person are actively taking financial advantage of the disabled people, and that pisses me off. Because they know that if they underpay them, they're like they know that if they pay them a certain amount, they're going to lose their disability. Like they know that for a fact. So that they're they're comfortable underpaying them, and that's where like you're saying it's the only industry that does it. Definitely, there are other industries with influencers that work entirely off of like like just not really paying people and like you know taking advantage of micro influencers. I've seen that a lot. Like if you send a free product to someone that has like five thousand followers, they'll probably post about it because they're just grateful to get the free thing because they're not used to that. So it's like taking advantage of people with like a smaller following or whatever. But it in this case, it's taking advantage of the fact that we know that like you're probably not working like a normal job. You're you're getting disability assistance. If we pay you what we what we should be paying you, you would you would lose that disability assistance, and we know that. So we're just going to take advantage of it and say like, oh, we'll throw you like a couple hundred bucks or whatever, and a free and wheelchair. Here's a couple. Here's here's five hundred bucks for showing up at a trade show, and here's a wheelchair. That's. No, that's not okay because any other industry, if you showed up at a trade show, if you were that 
important to the company that they hired you to show up at a trade show, that's multiple thousands of dollars. Let's not get it twisted. Like these companies, a lot of them are making stupid money. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And money. they're investing marketing Hand dollars over fist. If you looked at their entire marketing budget versus what they're paying like influencers. And that's the other thing that's, that's hard to measure is like, what is the ROI of like you using this wheelchair, like from, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them a shout out, like hands on concepts, like you're rocking a hands on concepts wheelchair all day. Like, yes, you are in you are influencing people to buy a hands on concept wheelchair, but Heavily. like, but we not, also have two major videos on our channel. For sure. But the thing is um, about it is like, let's say you were just an ambassador for hands on concepts and you could use a promo code with them or whatever on like link in bio, use my promo code. The chances of people like actually using it may be pretty high if you're always advertising it. But like most of the time, these ambassador programs and whatever, they're just like another ping in people's head because like the typical marketing thing is like you got to have like eight points of contact before you're going to buy something like you've got to hear about it at least like a handful of times before you just buy it's not like i see in richard's instagram for the very first time and i go oh wow that's a really cool wheelchair and i immediately go buy it like that just does not happen you just have to see and it so because multiple, you're an ambassador times, yeah. you would you're thinking like oh well yeah that's fine like i'll just get a promo code on my website and they'll track how many times people use it and like nope. that'll be an accurate measurement of like how how my how much my influence is and you're like kind of bummed at the end of the nope. month where you're like ah two or three people use my promo code i guess i guess i'm not as influential as i really think i am and that's just where it's just not true because bad people are are you are you've hit them in a part of their brain that is affecting their buying uh power and like maybe richard has a promo code and i have a promo code and i've just been pushing it way harder but maybe you're a bigger fan of richard and then at the end of the day richard was really the one that first introduced you to this product but then you end up using my promo code because i'm always pushing it all the we time we did that when we bought you know? squarespace yeah we we're like who do we know that's an influencer that does squarespace ads oh this person this person and this person they're like who do we like the most we're like oh we like that guy the most and then we just used his promo code yeah because like squarespace sponsors so many people and I'm squarespace like, also pays them a lot of money a hundred percent uh-huh uh -huh. So it's like the, the, when I say when I say like if you want to look at an industry that does a does it really well that's sneaking into the disability industry is the CBD companies and the reason why is because cannabis slash CBD you cannot market you can, no magazine prints allowed no radio ads allowed no television commercials allowed no Facebook nothing is allowed nothing. CBD 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 is the highest regulated because it's cannabis and cannabis is still federally illegal. So you have to, you're only huh. allowed to do influencer marketing only. That's why. And no, cause there's CBD sponsored um, race cars. Dude, that, that's, I know this that's, girl. That's, that's, that's not billboards and magazines. And like, that's, it's a different classification. At Lifetime, there's CBD commercials on the TVs. But that, I think but, it's but within that's, Lifetime. But that's Lifetime's TV network or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's I mean, like, it's that, like tobacco. That, it's just like tobacco. It's but tobacco is not allowed to have it. Like it's like a it's a shill company that reps it. Like there's literally race cars that say CBD MD on them. I guess what I'm just trying to say is there are plenty of industries that have figured out influencer marketing that have figured out and also companies. By the way, you know that you're gonna make four to five times that money back, right? You do know that sometimes on one sale that influencer marketing is the most powerful form of marketing because that's the equivalent of like watching your favorite TV show and your favorite character turning around in the middle of the show and being like, look at how cool this shirt is. I like wearing this shirt because it's it's comfortable and it doesn't ruin over time. If you want to get a shirt, it's better than go that. to this website it's and better then they get than back that. to their shirt. It's a personal relationship. We are direct to consumer personal relationships. And it's like, if you guys are going to spend multiple thousand dollars on a booth, if you guys are going to spend multiple thousand dollars going to expos, if you're going to spend multiple thousands of dollars doing events, if you're going to do multiple thousand dollars um, doing magazines, how about you just pull one of those and hey, guess what? We're in the middle of a pandemic. So you know what's not happening? Events and expos. So I know you guys got big budgets now. You guys got multiple thousands of dollars just sitting around. So literally. So why don't you take that from your marketing budget in 2020, which by the way, you planned for because the pandemic wasn't here before 2020. Hey, call on all of you out right now. So you take that money and you approach these influencers. Hey, influencers, 
Jump on socialbluebook.com. 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 We're not being social, paid to say that. Socialbluebook.com. And I'm saying this because it's the equivalent of kellybluebook.com when you buy, sell, and trade a car. It shows you an estimate of how much value you are worth per piece of content you put on the internet. So, and th But this also takes a unification of influencers. That means that us, all of us wheelchair influencers that have big platforms or, and big followings on big platforms have to band together and say, no more free stuff for free advertising. No more free stuff for no more free advertising. We will not budge until we get a paycheck. And honestly, if you guys want me to be the head of that, I'll happily be the head of that because I will spearhead the shit out of this. And we can. There all hasn't been very many companies who've done free advertising. There hasn't been really any that no. we've done like free advertising for. Everything we have done some things where we like products have been given to us, and we'll do like a video with them. We've but, done like we've done uh, trades and pro bono deals before. So there's there's no one we ha we have not worked for free. We do not work for free. Every there's always some way that we are profiting off of content off of the content so i mean and, and that and that's that's the thing is well, like not a, necessarily we're not always profiting off the content but we're never going to be like lose like we're never going to market something for free that we haven't gotten like some sort of value from. from exactly benefit or value from like so, the podcast we did it for a while for free like we weren't doing any sponsorships or anything but like that but we weren't like shouting out well, brands here's, that we well, liked here's, for well no here's, here's a great example I'll, I'll i'll holler at hoc right now these guys are dope we love them i for months was contacting every manufacturer of wheelchairs ever to do a video about how to get properly fitted for a wheelchair. And no one, and I mean no one, wanted anything to do with me whatsoever. They were like, who is this moron? Who is this idiot? No, there's professionals that know how to get it fitted right, yada, yada, whatever. Like no one was paying a bit of attention to me. Even one of the biggest manufacturers, which, hey, guess what? Not gonna give you free advertising by saying your name, ha <laughs> ha. They, in no way, shape, or form wanted to be involved with us. And we're like, cool, fine. So eventually uh, we got in contact with the people at HOC. And the thing was, I was tagging them in, in our Instagram pictures because of the D's locks. I like D's locks. I wasn't even one, in one of their chairs. I was just rocking their D's locks. And I liked the product so much that I was just tagging it. They hit me up and were like, hey, we wanna get you a chair. You've been doing a really good job like promoting everything to everyone. We want to get you in a chair and anyone who's bought a chair or has priced one from HOC knows the cost and it's a good chunk of change. So I was like, cool, I'll do that because actually I need a new chair. And also the deal was, hey, when I get the chair, I'm going to come film a video in your manufacturing studio. And he goes, okay, okay. So I got to do a video and I got a wheelchair, which is worth multiple thousands of dollars. And their return is so good that we're doing more videos with them because, yeah. because they saw the value. And, and again, but isn't this kind of, just to, just to throw it back though, isn't that kind of what you were saying not to do earlier? Like, don't take, like if the athlete was going to take a free wheelchair, it's because I was wanting the video. If yeah. I didn't want the video, it would have been a different story, true, but because true. I was hunting and hunting and hunting and hunting for this video, Gotcha, I, gotcha, I got, gotcha. Even if they wouldn't have given me a wheelchair, I would have done it because I would have had access to a manufacturer. Mm. I wanted the video more than I wanted anything else. In the connection. In the connection. So gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, so I just want to clear that up. No, so you're right. So again, there's ways to finesse this, but like I've had plenty. There's one clothing company, which you if if this they know who they are, who sends out stuff to everyone for free. As long as they do dedicated uploads about and reviews about their product, but they do not pay them for the reviews and they do not at all. They just trade for product and their product is worth like pennies. Like their products are maybe worth anywhere between 50 to $200, but they're easily getting a thousand to $5,000 worth, worth of marketing dollars, which in turn generates sales. It's, it's, yeah. and it's like, come on people from the inside out, if you want, and, and guess what you can also do as a company, you can say, we hire disabled people. We also help people get off social security disability. We help people regain confidence. We help people become more confident. We help people return to life. Like, how is this not a win-win for everyone? Manufacturers, you spend a little bit of money, you make a ton. 
influencers get paid a little it's bit of money. It's got to happen the right way, though. Exactly. Influencers get paid a, a decent amount of money and spread the word to all their community. And then guess what? Their community gets a great product. So the end user wins, the influencer wins, and the company wins. All three people win. Currently, who wins is the company mm -hmm. and the end user. Because if the product is good enough, then the infuser. You know who gets left out of that conversation? The influencer. The one person who's trying to get back to work. The one person who's trying to find ways to be productive. The one person who's been fired, or, or excuse me, who's had 50 interviews and not been hired. The one person who's been to college and is willing to move anywhere in the entire United States just for a desk job. Mm -hmm. Someone who's willing to do anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the reason why this happens, though, in the broad scale of everything, like with influencers not getting paid, like what they should be getting paid, because I think on the on the very top end, it doesn't really happen because the top end has figured out, like, nah, I know what I'm worth, and I know, like, all the companies clamoring to work with me. I'm not necessarily talking about disabled community. I'm talking about just, like, in general. But then you do have these, because the barrier to entry of being an influencer is especially an instagram influencer is so low that people don't really see the the like value of like what is actually happening or like the value of a community and the value of like people that actually look up to you and all that because all they're seeing is like oh yeah well they post a lot of pretty pictures and people follow them like, but, you, but you can measure the value on socialbluebook.com exactly you exactly. met you met and also companies verify it Make sure that you yeah. see that oh screen. My God. Verify it. We know a lot of people that have like fake follower accounts and like call themselves like a curator and, an, and a freaking influencer. And it's like, bro, we know they're not influencing anyone. They're getting just as many likes as someone that like you went to high school with. Yeah. You know, like verify. That's the thing. Trust, but verify. The biggest influencers, trust, but verify. Companies, trust, but verify. And like, Always don't verify. just look at likes. You got to look at the overall like what situation of what's happening. Ignore all that. Social Blue Book does that for you. Exactly. Social Blue Book compiles every bit of data, including fake followers, mm. fake subscribers, fake views. Social Blue Book does it. And that's where, hey, people that are disabled that are looking for a job, YouTube is the real moneymaker. If you go on Social Blue Book, but also YouTube is the hardest one to grow on. If like for YouTube sure. is the most difficult, but that's Th what- There's a reason for that though. Like. If, there, if a platform is like hardest to grow on, it should be the one that would make the most money. Exactly. And that's, and, and again, that's, that's YouTube the YouTube game is hard. YouTube game ain't easy. We know this firsthand. So it's like one of these things where it's like, if you're going to invest in anything, invest your time in getting good at YouTube and maybe your secondary one might be Instagram. Pick one other secondary one, but honestly, I say focus on YouTube. And then this is how the companies can also verify that they're hardworking. The companies can verify that they're consistent. Oh, every week they upload. Oh, every week they got a compelling story. Oh, every week they're they're on their podcast. Oh, every week they're posting on their Instagram. Like that's how you can tell the diff when you someone is working hard for free. It's very simple to be comfortable paying them because totally. you're like, oh, they're working hard for free for themselves. How about I step in and say, hey, listen, I've got this really incredible product that I want to share with, with your community and I want to give you the product, but I also want to pay you for, for sharing this product with everyone. And you can strike up a deal. Also, influencers, do contracts. Also, companies, hey, do contracts, okay? Okay. So we need to, everyone needs to get on the same page. There just needs to be no vagueness. There just needs to be no gray area. And this is another thing that drives me nuts. Disabled people are already seen as lesser than. They're already seen as unprofessional or like weak or like I think lazy or like there, there's a lot of negative perception around disabled people and work. And again, you know what business model Corporation, products, companies can help the ones that serve them directly. The ones that actually are the companies that are helping them get back that good quality of life, that are giving them the cool catheters that help them not get UTIs, that help them get the wheelchair that's lightweight and doesn't ruin their shoulders, that help them with adaptive equipment in other areas of their life. Those are the companies that need to be investing <coughs> in their users. Well, I think I think a way that like, for example, just from a stimulus way that this could happen is like, 
for example, um, inside of uh, the government. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the United States right now, but like, for example, in the United States, uh, first of all, we need to re- abolish or repeal whatever situation happens when if you if you're disabled and you start making money, you lose all your social security stuff like that should not be a thing. That would be a major milestone for the whole community. I mean, and that's the, the challenge the, is there's there's no incentive to work. Like well, also you, you can live kind of comfortably on 12 grand a year if you don't do much. Also, if you get food stamps and also if you um have other forms of government assistance and benefits, yo thousand bucks a month when you don't have to pay for your apartment and you don't have to pay for your groceries kind of cool no it's what's it's dope. What's, what's the incentive to work none yeah and, that's and a, when you do start working guess what happens you lose your benefits but that's what i'm saying is like so it's actually not even an incentive to get back to work it's a disincentive exactly. because you're literally losing by trying to get back to work so there needs to be something in place that would incentivize people to work and then also something that could potentially incentivize companies who, uh, you know, it, it's like it, it, this happened with the electric cars. You know, electric cars were first coming out. So there was an incentive from the government where you get a tax break for however many like years you like had it. Now that is over because because electric cars have come into the mainstream. <laughs> kind of taken over. Yeah. I mean, there's still challenges with electric with electric cars, but like that tax break is no longer available because it came so mainstream that they didn't need to incentivize people to do something good for the environment. There was a little, same little, little thing, tax credit or same something. Same thing. Yeah, there was a tax credit. So you could like own a Nissan Leaf like almost for like nothing. So anyways. Free. Yeah. So anyways, what could happen is if, for example, you are a company that is serving a specific type of person, maybe there could be some sort of like tax incentive or an incentive if you were hiring those people specifically and like lifting up those communities, maybe uh, companies could receive some sort of uh, benefit as well, because I think that would like stimulate that type of hiring. Cause as of right now, they're not getting punished for, for not hiring, nope. you know, like a catheter company is not getting punished for not having a certain amount of like wheelchair users. And I don't think they necessarily should be. I like punished. your train of thought a lot. I like your train because, of thought a lot. I do. Because I think that if there was like some sort of incentive for those companies to uh, like, hire the people that they like serve and all that like that would be awesome another thing that would be great is if there was like an incentive to like hire uh ex-convicts or like ex-felon felons or something like that because as of right now there would be no incentive to hire someone with like a criminal but but there are companies like dave's killer bread for example who or ben and jerry's yeah or ben and jerry's and and those that's what i'm saying but those more of those companies should exist but there's not really much of an incentive besides uh, the karmic value and the feel good value that you would feel by like hiring someone who has uh, maybe had a rough time or like whatever. Um, and I don't typically like the idea of um, what's the what's the word uh, affirmative action, you know, like mm, when like we yeah. need to hire this many black people and this many Asians and this many, you know, blah, 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 because we need to be culturally diverse on paper, you know. But I think it kind of starts from, you know, actually. I mean, Ben and Jerry's is a great example or Dave's Killer Bread. Like you said, they they literally go out of their way to hire people that they know uh, need a second chance or whatever. And I think like, you know, a lot of activism is happening around like people of color and things like that right now. But I think that will start to trickle down more and more as we get to be more of a like progressive society. Um, and, you know, some people I think look that look at all of that as like an attack on like the previous way of life because things need to change. Um, but um, I think that, th- you know, things need to change. Well, you know how it would be possible to get done? Check this issue out. This is the power of us disabled people. You know, there's one in five people, 20% of the United States is disabled. So check this Physically sh- or like what? You uh, know, because like, that are does class- that include like dis- depression or something? They're classified as disabled from the government meaning they have like a check, like they are disabled. I don't one know. One in five. One in five. One in five people are on How much on is a, like elderly, I wonder? Don't know. But so hear this, hear me out. This, this is how Even it happens. if it was one in 10 or one in 20 or one in 100, that's still a shit ton that's of people. That's still a ton of people. So this is what you do. This is how we figure it out. You've been seeing a lot, how there's a lot of uh, black activism going on where they say, call your call your, your congressperson, call your mayor, call your city, call your town, call, 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 send these emails. Same thing. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how to strategically, and we got to get people involved which I think we maybe have a connection with someone who may be able to do this. Yeah, we've got some connections. You you put up a bill, 
and the bill goes to I think it's Congress, and then it ev- goes to Capitol Hill. Yeah, Hill, I'm just a bill, a regular <laughs> bill. And then what happens <laughs> is you call your representative from your state and you tell them how important that bill is to you. You say, "Hey, this bill is really important. I've been wanting to get back to work. If you can really incentivize companies to get uh, tax bonuses or, or tax incentives for, for hiring for, disabled for, people, for, for hiring whatever. disabled people, this would really mean a lot to me. I'm trying to be a contributing member of society. And the best part is that there is less of a strain on on medic." care right now and because currently there's a big strain and we all know that social security is going to run out eventually anyway so hopefully this can remove people from the social security system and get off the teat of the government like well i think it would it would have to have like a trickle down type system like what they did with the the, with the stimulus checks it's like okay if you're disabled and you're making you know like how much did you say like twelve thousand dollars a year for example that's just an example i just just picked a thousand dollars a month out of my butt it varies from state to state from person to person for the for the sake of the example let's say you're making twelve thousand dollars a month from the government just not doing anything just literally just existing so if you start making more than that twelve thousand it starts to go away but what if it was for example um a like tiered system where like as you made you know uh fifty thousand dollars a year you start to lose a little bit more of of your uh like just government assistance because like you said, it would that would incentivize the government because it's like, yo, we're trying to get these people off of the government's teat. It would it would The government doesn't even care enough, which is weird to me. Well, the government just doesn't seem to care with a lot of stuff. Like they they just we're in like all this national debt, but like what does that even mean? You know, like we're able to kind of we're in this weird position where we can kind of just like print an infinite amount of printing money. money and USD is like the kind of like universal standard. I mean, that's a whole nother can of worms. Like that's why we need to move <laughs> to, to some sort of like Bitcoin type situation where and you money can't make more. is money and you can't just like make more whenever you want to. Um, but again, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but I think again, oh, I forgot Akbar was in here. Again, a I little, think a little mascot's running around, so you might see him on camera. Yeah. Normally we kick him out, but he was napping in the corner. How can we? Gabby knows how cute he is. Come on. Yeah, he's just looking. He's just chilling, looking at me. Yeah. But anyways, um, <laughs> I guess <laughs> the, the, the cute buddy. This is why I didn't want to have Akbar in here. Damn it. Now we're talking about him. Um. Anyways, he was just the point I'm making is the government doesn't seem to really have an incentive to like do any of this right now because like as it sits. No one's really like we are a society that doesn't really try to analyze the problems before they happen. We just try to fix them like after they happen. And as of right now, there's not a real like outcry. There's not like an obvious problem that the government is like needing to fix necessarily. They're just like, oh, well, that's kind of the system. And like, you should just be happy that you're getting your thousand dollars a month and like stop complaining about it. You know, some people could look at it like that. Um, I just think disabled people and especially spinal cord injury males, I'm speaking for myself here, like our right to work, to feel productive, to be like a contributing member of society, can, to contribute to our families, to like, yeah. to, to be able to scale. You, can't even, you wouldn't even be able to like get married in certain circumstances exactly, because you, you, lose your benefits. you lose your benefits. Yeah. And it's like, an, in order to be able to scale and grow. And then because like you, you just like there's there, there's so there's ways man like disabled people don't have to be like in poverty like we shouldn't be in poverty like yeah just because we can't produce and it kind of goes back to this whole capitalism yeah and ish. and but the but the thing that you can use capitalism to your advantage of is like yes there are a lot of like weird things but for sure like there's ways that you can make your own thing without being necessarily like an influencer you know what i mean like not everyone's cut out to like do this social media of course there's a way to have like sales you could have a sales job you know you could have um a a job working um on social media marketing you could have um accountant you can be literally anything that you can do from your computer or your phone literally any job that you see any able-bodied person do from their computer or from their phone you can also do that and luckily today thanks to the internet there is a ton of things you can do yeah from I your think, computer I think on, and on your phone. I think companies just 
I think like a lot of companies just don't want to hire people with disabilities because there's just like a lot of unknowns that they just don't really realize, you know, like, they're like, I don't know, what if he like calls in sick and says that he's having like some sort of weird issue with his like disability? Like, I, I can't argue well, against that. In you the know? context that I'm talking about, about the um, companies hiring individuals as influencers, they're not on payroll. They're 1099 contractors. They're yeah, not, I know. Not, I was talking not about on, stuff that's not they're, they're influencers. Not on, they're not on payroll. I'm saying, like, you were giving the example of any job that you can do from your chair. I'm just saying that's why I think there is, there's just not enough education on, like, like I don't know. Like, uh, uh, you know, they're looking at two candidates they're, they're, they're going to hire. One's an able-bodied person. One's a person in a wheelchair. There's just, like, more unknowns with this person. And as a business, you're trying to be... Uh, you're literally trying to be stable and Lim know limit what's risks. going yeah. on at all times and like any sort of uh in inconsistency or any sort of um like situation that could be um unpredictable is more like risk you know and inherently i get that but at the same time like it is just a lack of education and a, and it is just the stereotype of like disabled people and for and the other thing is maybe like there's definitely uh, i don't even want to get into this other side of argument that i was going to make but yeah. anyways i'm just saying like th i think that there is a there's a reason why it's happening it's not necessarily just because people have like like it, it is like internalized ableism that they don't realize mm -hmm. and it's that they don't the keyword there is they don't realize it yes and that they're I well, think COVID, I mean, COVID exposed it all. We can work from home now. Everyone can work from home now, basically. COVID exposed everything. Yeah. Oh, so you can't make accommodations for disabled people companies? Oh, but when there's a the middle of a pandemic, you can all of a sudden magically figure out solutions to accommodate disabled people? Oh, people that are stuck at their house? You know, again, it's, come it, on, Again, man. it's the idea that there would be a solution, but there's not... It's not a, an itch that is so painful that you would need to address it. It's just like, well, yeah, we could be a little more accommodating, but like, what's the downside of not accommodating them? But that as goes, of right now, nothing. But that goes back to the root of it. It starts with disability pride. It's and then and then it goes into I am I am proud of my disability and I want to be able to produce again. And then it turns into activism. No, we 100%. all come together as a group and become so annoying. We become in the fly in the face of the government and in the fly in the face of the of the companies and a fly on the face of everyone till they have to swat it, till they have to smack it that's away. That's what I'm saying. And like there has to be noise. But who's gonna start that? You know what I mean? Like 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 that's what I'm saying. Like we start with disability I mean, pride. I'd probably say it was it's us. You know, it's like you, yeah. you've always said like I don't want to be this, the face of like this, but it's like who and else is I mean, going to I'm be. the only one who's so frustrated and so mad and so hollering and so yelling about it. But I tell you what, though, I've been paying attention close to social media and hey, companies, just so you know, I'm paying real close attention to all the people you're screwing over, and I and I remember you. I remember exactly who you are. So how the, you how you treat other people means how you're going to treat me. So if I see you treating people bad, and then later in the future we try to get some work, uh, uh, not going to happen. Well, here not here's the other thing is like I've seen this argument on social media. It's so funny about like, well. Like, th trust me, this goes back to the argument that we're talking about. It's like, well, when Obama was president, Aunt Jemima wasn't racist. When Obama was president, Uncle Ben's didn't have to change the logo. In when Obama was president, Lego didn't take down all the police uh, Lego sets. You know, like, what's the big problem now? Oh, all of a sudden it's racist because one because of George Floyd. It's like, no, dude. The all of a sudden all this stuff is because again it was the, it was like. During Obama, that maybe there was Aunt Jemima. Let's just take that for example. They're changing their logo because um, they were appropriating the image of a black woman who probably was like basically a slave. That's like kind of the argument there. And it's like, well, why why have we just let this slide for so many years without addressing it? It's because it was like all the employees there. They knew deep down, like maybe there was a like a little buzzing, like a little fly. Maybe it was maybe a coworker mentions it at one point, like, yo. You ever thought about how Aunt Jemima might be like a little bit low key racist? And it's like, oh yeah, maybe a little bit, but I mean, like, I'm not gonna say anything. I got a paycheck like, in Benny's, whatever. Yeah, yeah, and like this company's been around for so long. Like, even you know, I'm sure for years they've thought about it. Like, at some point, guys, we're probably gonna have to make some sort of like branding switch. But like, right now is not the time. Like, you know, right, we're probably gonna have to like address this. But right now is not really the time because people are just gonna blow it out of proportion. Well, I also, and I think that that's why right now is the time. And what you're saying with the disability activism is like, right now is the time. 
where a lot of people are very fired up about inclusion and activism and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So right now I think is the time to be very vocal about this kind of stuff because during like normalcy, when everything goes back to quote unquote normal, when, whenever and however that happens, a lot of things are going to be shifted and a lot of, uh, industries will never go back to this to the way they were pre-covid and things like that and i think that we can take advantage of the fact that like yo i tried to get hired at this place for like so many years because they said like oh the way they do things is not accommodating we're sorry or like however they said it but now there might be an opportunity because it's like yo everyone's working from home etc etc so i think like the that that argument of like oh well why didn't you guys fix this so long ago if this is such a big problem why why now are we all making a big fuss about it and it's like because we hadn't organized and actually made a big f enough fuss about it but there's a lot of people that internally know that this is a big problem but no one decided to like take a stand and organize a large group of people against it yeah and i i think um when you talk about like aunt jemima and uncle ben's like it wasn't racist back then no it was just no one was talking about it. It wasn't on the forefront of anyone's, yeah, I never, anyone's mind. I think the thing is, like, I've seen a lot of people posting about saying, like, they're just pandering and they're just trying to be more woke than the next and blah, blah, blah. And, like, it wasn't a problem then, so why is it a problem now? They're just uprooting our society. They just want to change everything and Who's blah, blah, they? blah. They want, they want to have power. They just want to, like, you know, Who's change they? whatever they can to exert the power. Who knows? Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Anytime the left, BLM, black people, like how, however yeah. you rate, however you in your brain. I just always hate, classify I hate it. any argument that has they and them in it, and they do not specify who they or them is. Because if they don't, then you're you know, and then it all boils down it's to like, like oh, some you racist know, shit. they do it. Oh well, them. It's like who the fuck is they and them? Be clear. You know them in the inner cities, and it's like, what, white people gentrifying fucking areas? Like, who is they? You know, like, people, people, yeah. yeah. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you'd like to see the full episode, click right here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. If you'd like more clips, we got two more right over here.